My friend, thank you for stopping by Blossoming by Grace and Grit. This is Gloria Restoy. Don't just pass by, stay a while, gather with us, subscribe and click on the bell so that you're notified of every new video that I make. Be a part of our community, be a part of our family and your life will never be the same again as we learn the precepts and the foundational truths of the Word of God, which have stood the test of time. Let us change the world together by changing ourselves first, allowing Him to change us. Thank you for your visit. Thank you for your subscription. It means a lot to me. Have a blessed day. The waiting room. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, chapter 8, verse 34, Blessed are those who listen to me, watching daily at my doors, waiting at my doorway. We wait for other people. We wait in line at the grocery store. We wait to see the next medical test, what it will show. We wait quietly for our loved ones. Waiting is part of life, but it isn't easy. When nothing seems to be happening, we can become impatient and anxious. We want things to start moving. Waiting on the Lord is one of the hardest things we'll ever have to do. As humans, our nature is to go at it alone, try to accomplish things on our own strength and take control of the situation. But that's often not in our best interest. Too often, I get ahead of God and I try to accomplish things that I'm not ready for. I am currently in a time of waiting, as you may be in a time of waiting, my friend. And sometimes everything in us screams, I, let's get this done right now. Because we, if we are overachievers, if we are people that get things done, resolve things right now, um, it, it's very hard to wait. But when you know, and when you are assured, when you have written in tablets, when you've written in journals, the entries and the recorded miracles like I have of what the Lord has done in my life, then waiting, waiting is still hard, but not as hard because I know that he is a good father. I know that he will accomplish what his promise says to me and his promises are all yes and amen. The question is, will we wait for his provision or try to force our own outcome? And that is never a good idea at all. When we get ahead of God, when we put our dreams in front of God, when we want something so bad that it becomes like an idol in our life, we stop hearing the voice of God. We start being clouded and we just go based on our understanding and our strength and that is never a good idea. For me, in my own experience, that has always been chaotic. And so I have learned to wait on the Lord and I've learned also to write his miracles every month in a journal, in my journal, and I reserve a blank page for the miracles that the Lord does for whatever month we're in I record the miracles and then at the end of the year I transfer those miracles onto another ledger another journal which is my miracle journal and I always have that journal ready 
for those times that I'm walking through the wilderness, for those seasons, because there are seasons in our, in our life and seasons of, of cold or seasons of hot, of heat. And, and so there are different seasons when we are going through things. And so in those seasons or in that time of waiting, in that time where I'm walking through a wilderness or in that time when I'm not hearing from God, in that time where everything is standing still and I am running a marathon, in those times I take out my miracle journal and I start reading what the Lord has done in my life. And then I can and then I can really wait with that quiet assurance and that expectation that my father is gonna come through. Waiting on the Lord is active. It's preparing our hearts. It's being ready to serve and expecting God to provide. It's knowing that God is already working behind the scenes. So when the time is exactly right, everything will be in place for us to move forward. And the Bible is full of verses regarding waiting on the Lord. Wait for the Lord, be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord in Psalm 27, 14. Be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently for him to act. Don't worry about evil people who prosper or fret about their wicked schemes, Psalm 37, 7. But for you, O Lord, do I wait. It is you, O Lord, my God, who will answer, Psalm 38, 15. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of the Lord, in the house of God. I trust in the steadfast love of God forever and ever. I will thank you forever because you have done it. I will wait for your name for it is good in the presence of the godly. Psalm 52, verse 8 through 9. He gives power to the faint and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Isaiah 40 verse 29 through 31. Waiting on the Lord is a form of activity. Waiting creates a pause. If used correctly, it can help us to linger and to listen, which is so important in that time when you're waiting on the Lord. We can stop and collect our thoughts. We can take a few deep breaths and rest in God's care, even if we can't find the words or the energy to talk to him. There are times when there are moments when things are dry. There are moments in our lives when our prayer becomes dry and we are waiting for something. We are waiting for our promise, but we have to find the encouragement and we have to find the hope in what God has done in the past remembering his miracles, remembering that he is good, remembering that he's come through for you before and he will do it again. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for the waiting room. We thank you for those quiet times and we thank you, Lord, because we can savor the sights and we can savor the sounds and we can savor your presence, my Father, in that waiting room, my God, in that place where we are just in expectancy of those great and mighty things that you are going to do. We are in expectancy to see our promise fulfilled, my God. And Lord, I pray that you give us spiritual ears to hear you, Lord God, loud and clear, Father. And Father, spiritual sight, my God, eyes to see, my God, what you want us to see, my Lord. I thank you, Lord God, for giving us the time to open our hearts with you. My God, those wait and see moments hold promises and blessings. And you, Lord God, are with us every step of the way. You are with us. And I know that you know, Father, that waiting is difficult. But Father, you develop good character in us. You develop our faith. You, de you develop our perseverance, Lord. 
our patience. And I just pray that you open our eyes, Lord God, to see the blessings in the pauses of life. God, in your son's name, we pray. Amen.